Moin, ihr wunderbaren Menschen des Interwebs. Ich begrüße euch ganz herzlich zurück zu meinem Let's Play von The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Wir wollten einmal gucken, ob wir Iris oder Shomes zu Hause antreffen können. Weil die haben sich ja einfach so verdrückt. Das sieht aber schlecht aus. Okay, dann haben wir eigentlich nur noch Fresno Street, weil ich glaube, sonst waren wir überall. Dann gucken wir mal, ob sich hier etwas getan hat. The police are still busily investigating in here, then. But Gina's nowhere to be seen. Where is she? Yes, it has been blissfully quiet, hasn't it? Perhaps she's out investigating on her own, practicing what her boss taught her. Well, I expect she will be back before too long. Shall we wait? Actually... There's something different about this room since the last time we were here, isn't there? We could always use the time to investigate more thoughtfully. Ja, und zwar diese äh, Kiste hier. This little trunk wasn't here before, was it? Oh, it appears to be made of metal. It must be very heavy. I wonder to whom it belongs. There are some initials on the outside. Look. CG. Let's ask one of the policemen if they know how it came to be here. Oi! What do you think you're doing? That's my trunk, that is. Hands off! Gina! Where were you hiding? I don't know. Yeah, leave something unattended for a few seconds and every Tom Dick and Eric's got his greedy eyes on it. Um, just a wild guess, Gina, but... What? Spit it out, Ara. It is fair to say that you've only owned the trunk since this morning's trial. But what are you trying to say? Come on, this trunk goes with me everywhere, always is. Where have you been the last year? Trying not to incur your wrath, mainly. You should hear them talking at the yard now. They should be ashamed of themselves. They are saying that it was the boss who killed all them bludgers. Uh, you mean the whole reaper thing? Apparently the boss was investigating stuff that no one else at the yard knew nothing about. Stuff to do with all them criminals who got off scot-free. Yes, the ones prosecuted by Lord von Ziegs, who used bribery and corruption to evade his conviction. Well then, obviously, it was the Blumen Reaper giving the order that's weren't it. But why would people be suspecting Inspector Gregson of being involved in the killings? There was a notebook hidden in his office. Oh no, this doesn't sound good. It added about all the crimes that have been patched as the Reaper's work. Did you see it, Gina? Did you see the notebook? They wouldn't flame and let me. Because I'm just an apprentice, apparently. But it was me who found it, and he was my boss. That's right. I was pretty miffed about it, so... I sneaked a peek at what it said anyway. That's our Gina. So, you managed to see what was written in Gregson's secret notebook anyway, did you? Why I see it, it's my right to read what they wrote. What, he, what had he written, Gina? Dates, times, places, names, and all... Long list of them. All details about the blood you're supposed to have been done in by the Reaper. But there could be an explanation for that. Perhaps it was a record of the inspector's investigations into the Reaper's activities. Exactly, that's what I said. That's the first thing you would think, right? As it appears, it was full of names I recognize anyway. Well, the Reaper's targets were almost exclusively known leaders of London's criminal underworld. Well, yeah, but there was one name right at the end that was a bit odd. At the end of the list, you mean? I'm pretty sure the date against it was 
31st October. Oh, the day before the inspector was found dead. So, what was the odd name? It weren't like a name I've ever seen before. It was something like, um... Ah, it's not good. I can't remember it. I don't think it was an English name, put it that way. Oh dear, what a pity. There was something else too. I don't know if it matters, but the same name kept coming up over and over. Thin it was. Don't suppose it means anything, but... Did you say Shin? What? It does mean something. Lord Fonzix knew the name too. He mentioned her as well. The woman who actually did the deeds. And now we find out her name appeared in Gregson's secret notebook? We haven't seen you for a little while, have we, Gina? Well, of course not. I've been busy, ain't I? Investigating and that... The lads at the yard are trying to trace the boss's movements the day before it happened. The day before. That would be the undercover investigation into the red headed leak then. Only the boss didn't go, did he? You found some... Kovgut was pretending to be in Tinsia Hodo. Yes, it was Mr. Wujil who actually went to the park on Line Street that day, posing as Gregson. Well, anyway, you ain't the only one turning stuff up. I've got me own ways of getting results. Hey, me and me partner here get together. There's nothing we can't track down. Oh, little Toby. He's such a faithful friend. So, have you tracked anything down, then? What you think, eh? Of course we have. Can't tell you, though. Police business, in it. Anyway, the point is, if you lot ever need any help, you know who to turn to, right? Me and the hell out here. Right. Because he looks oh so hellish, honest. Um, Gina, about your hellhound there. Chief Inspector Toby, you mean? He's the bride of the force, he is. In Japanese, police dog means something quite different and not altogether nice to those involved in crime. But here in Britain, it's a wonderful compliment, it seems, for a canine at least. It should be. After all, in the great exhibition case the other day, it was Toby here who managed to locate Trevor's workshop. Maybe it's time for another demonstration of what this super dog can do, eh? Do we have something the Chief Inspector could catch the send off, I wonder? Um, eigentlich nur die Perücke, wenn ich mir das so ansehe. Ja, eigentlich nur die Perücke hier. Well, Chief Inspector Toby, if you wouldn't mind having a sniff of this. He might be a little too keen, don't you think? The Chief Inspector made short work of Gina there. Ah, oh, look what he's look what he's gone to. Oh my, that drum clearly still has a very strong scent. Of Inspector Gregson. In other words, it must have belonged to him. Alright, it's a fair cup, I suppose. And you nearly got away with it too. You always talk so proudly of Chief Inspector Toby's nose and what it can achieve. Did it not cross your mind that he might identify something that was right next to us? Yeah, that was a bit of a bloomer, weren't it? That's enough though, then, Gina. I think it's time you told us the truth about that trunk. It weren't like that. It, it just weren't. What are you talking about? I know what's going through that head of yours, but that ain't what happened. Alright then, what did happen? Well, like I said before, we were trying to trace the boss's movements. So I let Toby ear have a whiff of the boss's overcoat. And as soon as I done that, he went off like a shot. Right to the sandwich. 
to a sandwich, not to a bag of chips. Mr. Marohoro, I believe Gina means the witness. Oh, I forgot about that sandwich. Yeah, he had it hidden be between the wooden boards of his the boss's trunk. You mean when they heard the sound like a gunshot and all p piled in here? Exactly. He napped it from the scene. Goodness. Me and the chief inspector gave that sandwich a good grilling, and you know what he said? I th th thought it might fetch a c c c good price, and the chap wouldn't be, be needing it anymore, so. But, but, but that's all I did. Nothing more. No, no, nothing less. Would you Adam and Eve the cheek of it, eh? Stealing the dead boss's stuff to flock. But Miss Venus wasn't the only one to meddle with the scene of the crime then. How could they? So anyway, that's how it happened. And it's a pretty decent trunk, so I figured I might as well make use of it. If there's someone wrong with that, eh? Maybe you and Mr. Sandwich should try to find the answer to the question together. I think perhaps the trunk should be turned over to the police, don't you? What are you on about? I'm the police. Tina, if you wouldn't mind, could we maybe examine it? Yeah, alright then. Do what you want with it. Thank you. We shall make a detailed record of our examination of the evidence. Okay, Gregson's trunk. What's the matter with Toby? Why is he acting so aggressively towards me all of a sudden? Mr. Narohoro, be careful, it must be the trunk. Toby, oi, what you're doing? You're gonna lick his face off. Mr. Narohoro. Tina, quickly, hail a carriage. Okay. <lacht> Was war das denn gerade? Oh, Mr. Narohoro, are you right? Miss Susato. Ah, uh -uh. conscious again at last. A blessed relief, my dear fellow. After all, to drop dead after a moderate licking by a small terrier mo most unseemly. What is it or isn't seemly is irrelevant here, Mr. Shams. I'm so glad there's no lasting damage. How are you feeling? I'm fine, thank you. Did you bring me back here? Ah, what's this on my head? A bandage? Sadly, we had no ice, so that's a compress of sugar water. Sugar water? Don't worry, Mr. Narahoro, it's the first aid treatment that my father told me. Oh, thank you. So, let us take tea when you're filling up to it. But of course, no sugar in the patient's cup. The bomb on my head is throbbing sweetly enough, don't worry. Whenever you feel ready, then. You're right, Mr. Naruhoro. It's rather unusual to find ourselves here in the middle of our investigations. It's just occurred to me that I might have forgotten something when we left this morning. Please don't worry. As long as you continue to investigate softly, you won't go far wrong. Oh, yes, of course. I must get back to work as soon as possible. Um... Thank you for your concern, Mr. Sholmes. My dear fellow, think nothing of it. I must say I was quite startled when I heard that you'd been attacked by a dog. For a moment I feared that infamous murderer of so many had come back from the dead. You mean a professor? Fortunately, I see your price for this unscathed. That stiff turned up collar of yours obviously afforded some welcome protection. Was I that close to death? 
All I really remember is the dog licking my face over and over and over again. Well, if you wish to avoid such troubles in future, a little mustard spread on the cheeks should do the trick. I should think that would balance the sweetness of your bandage rather splendidly. Okay. Okay, wo soll ich denn dann hingehen? Soll ich zu Shomes gehen? Weil er meinte, wir trinken Tee? Schwarzbiergebot brodelnd wie ein Feuerberg bin schon das mir verbrannt ach hopfen deine Wut her mit dem Knacker ich befahl hat wie ein Diamant den Zahn in zwei Es bra, o über deine Wut. Herr dem Scheid holt ich gelob und auf den ersten Streich. Alle Seiten des Teris weode an die Wut. Herr mit dem Schwarzbiergebot. Okay, jetzt fängst du wieder von vorne an. Ich war gerade so hart verwirrt, auf einmal Deutsch im Hintergrund zu hören. Also, what? Was ist denn jetzt los? Okay, also irgendwas mit Schwarzbier und Wut. Und ich glaube, im zweiten Vers war irgendwas mit Eber. Okay, <lacht> machen wir mal weiter. What on earth is going on in here? Am I having a bad dream? Ah, no, it's an old German folk song. Rather a fine rendition, I think. That's the least of my concerns. Um, Iris? Iris, what's the matter? Um, who is that sprawling? I mean, that relaxed gentleman over there. Sieht aus wie Herr Mikotoba. Iris, are you even listening? Excuse me, sir. I do apologize for troubling you whilst you're singing so merrily, but... Would you be kind enough to explain the situation? Well, that worked. A groaning gentleman and a mute young girl. A rather tantalizing juxtaposition. And one that appears to have ins inceded the gods of deduction within me to find their voices too. Uh, Mr. Sholmes, do you mean... The strains of reasoning within me are playing now as a delightful duet. One melody sings of a reunion full of nostalgia. Whilst the other is a morose theme about the great secret you're trying so desperately to conceal, Iris. Oh, oder ist das, ist das ihr Vater? Aber jetzt so, auf dem ersten Blick sieht er ein bisschen aus wie, wie, wie Mikotoba. He's turned as white as a sheet. So as usual, you're, you've instantly seen to the very heart of the matter. And by the time my own brief performance is over, I feel sure this gentleman's song will reach its final. So then, to music land where all is sweetness and delicacy and harmony. Pray, don't try Herlock Sholmes' latest logic and reasoning spectacular. Okay, ich kann nicht warten, die <lacht> verrückte Schlussfolgerung wieder zu hören. Firstly, we consider the gentleman's nationality. Clearly, he's a German with no grasp of the English language. As evidenced by the Germanic song he sings and his apparent inability to understand when asked to desist. Um, Okay, also das ist ja ganz klar ein Recording, das gerade läuft und nicht er selber. So, why is the man here at all and in such apparently high spirits? 
The answer, of course, Iris, is clearly known to you. Indeed, we need only follow the gaze of those bright young eyes to unravel that particular part of this mystery. The reason for the man's mildly irritating warbling is revealed by the herbal tea. You obviously offered our German guest a cup of your latest herbal blend. The tea's delectable flavor has made the man's spirit soar and resulted in this joyful ditty dumbling incessantly in, incessantly from his lips. I eagerly await sampling the flavor myself that I may join the fellow in his state of elation. Now to the next question. Who exactly is this gentleman, gentleman availing himself so sorrowfully of this city? As it happens, a number of years ago now, a certain gentleman of German origin engaged my services in solving a particular delicate case. He required the retrieval of letters once sent to an acquaintance that might have proved problematic. In order to conceal his noble identity, he also arrived at my office in a mask. The gentleman's name was Wilhelm Gottstreich Siegesmund von Wormstein. The King of Germany. If my memory serves, the mask worn by this gentleman is identical. Yes, there can be no question, that mask belongs to the King of Germany. Das ist die Maske, die Kasuma getragen hatte, als er hierher kam. It would appear that his my majesty remembers the fine service I afforded him. And has decided to show his face again, mask and all, in order to express his gratitude. A well-mannered monarch, indeed. Wouldn't you agree, my dear fellow? So the identity of this masked visitor is in fact my former client, the King of Germany. Indeed, his son is currently in London as well, enjoying the wonders of the Great Exhibition. Okay, absolut mal voll daneben. Which leaves us with one remaining imponderable. Yes, you, young Iris. But your apparently inexplicable silence is unable to hide the truth. Yes, the reason for your muteness is concealed inside that knapsack. A five pound note, I believe. I must say, as your compatriot, I'm deeply saddened. It would appear that you've allowed yourself to be bribed into silence by His Royal Highness, earning yourself some spending money in exchange for keeping quiet about the King's secret. And now the final piece of the puzzle. What is this secret you strive to hide with your silence, Iris? Ah, yes, we need only follow the brief involuntary twitch of your eyes to find the answer. You were attempting to abscond with that coffee cup. My favorite coffee cup, in fact. Or should I say, the handle of my favorite coffee cup? It appears that his high spirit highness broke it in the midst of his high jinx. Which leads us to the sad truth. My favorite coffee cup has been broken by the king of Germany and Iris, you tried to conceal it from me. I shall have a bill sent via governmental channels to the German royal family for its replacement. Okay, auch wieder falsch. Ich glaube, dass Iris äh, die, oh, den Autopsiebericht versteckt. Das concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this painful puzzle. <laughs> Ach, Mann, ey. Mit dem Schwarzbiergebot. Modelnd wie ein Feuerberg With your silence as well, the fellow's jovial warbling rather rings in the ears, does it not? Ah, uh, Mr. Sholmes, I must say something does rather trouble me. Pray, Miss Suzato, do tell. His Royal Highness... ...doesn't appear to have moved the muscles since we arrived. And you haven't said a word either, Iris. 
Mr. Shoms has it all right. You might as well own up to it now. Your reasoning isn't entirely without substance, I must admit. And one other thing, Mr. Shoms. Yet another grievance, Mr. Naruhoro? Surely not. Well, I actually read the story of that case recently. The one you were just describing. And according to that, at least, it wasn't the king of Germany, it was the king of Bohemia. Goodness, was it? Yes, that's quite true. Master Gotts, the prince, testified to that in court. In his words, I have come to see the great exhibition all the way from my home in Bohemia. Bohemia. I would ask you to keep that minor error to yourselves. It could easily become quite a scandal. I believe, Mr. Naruhoro, that it's our turn now to make some corrections to a number of minor errors that may have slipped in. Yes, even Mr. Shams is willing to admit he might be slightly wide of the mark this time. Although it's clear that Iris is definitely hiding something. We need to find out the truth behind this mysterious scene. But one truth is incontrovertible. My favorite copy cup is no more. So shall we embark again? On a joint pres presentation of Herlock Shams' logic and reasoning spectacular. Goodie, dann äh, machen wir das doch mal. So, ich überspringe das hier, weil wir ja nur zu dem Punkt müssen, den wir korrigieren müssen. Okay. So, what? It's some mix of herbs that gives you the urge to sing. Goodness, I should like to try some. And I would like to hear you singing, but this man... Just how long does he intend to keep up with that... Yun, do you suppose? As I said, he's been stuck still the entire time, and if you look closely, his lips aren't moving either. I'm so much sure what's actually responsible for the spirited singing, but I suspect the answer lies at the end of Iris' case. Uh, yeah, das muss irgendein... hier. Das Grammophon. The reason for the man's middly irritating warbling is re relieved by the gramophone. Indeed, for no well-bred gentleman would break into an obscure folk song when making a social call. In other words, this gentleman isn't singing at all, in fact. It would appear that the fellow is unconscious. Ah, the music seems to have stopped now. I ask you, Mr. Naruhoro, why would I have purchased a recording of that gibberish? How should I know? Well, never mind. On with the deduction. Who exactly is this gentleman availing himself so sorrowfully of this city? Yeah, okay, jetzt kommt die Identität und ich glaube, er hat das mit der Maske. Hatte ja was zu tun. Also er hat, zu, er hat zumindest die Maske erwähnt. Und ich schätze mal, die hatte damit was zu tun. Aber es ist ja die Maske von Kasuma. Die er getragen hatte, als er hier war. No, das stimmt nicht. Although we've already established that it was actually the king of Bohemia, it seems Mr. Sholmes intends to persist with his Germany theory for some reason. Come to think of it, the young prince was wearing a mask as well, wasn't he? Master God, the boy whom you had in tears? Don't remind me, or anyone else. Do you suppose all members of the aristocracy of mainland Europe wear masks? I'm sure they do. Well, probably. Anyway. The point is, that mask doesn't belong to any king. 
No, that's right, as we will know. Because we can identify the true owner of this mask. Uh, yeah, it's Kazuma. Yes, there can be no question that mask belongs to Kazuma Sogi. In other words, my memory is sublimely unreliable. Only you could try to make that sound positive. Kazuma's mask has been languishing on this metal chest for several days, though that doesn't explain why the gentleman is wearing it now. But it is now a simple matter to determine our guest's true identity. After all, the gentleman is unconscious. We need only excuse ourselves in advance, gently lift the mask and peer beneath it. Uh, I don't believe it. Uh, uh, father? I'm afraid, Mr. Zato, you must be Mr. No, I think not, Mr. Shams. Then it would appear our logic and reasoning has once again re revealed the truth. This mysterious visitor... ...is my unconscious father, Eugene Mikotoba. Logic and reasoning, or just looking and saying. <laughs> oh, oh, Mann, ey. <laughs> ja, ich mag das, wenn Renesuke so ein bisschen bissig ist. Which leaves us with one remaining im unbearable. Yes, you, young Iris. But you're apparently inexplicable silence is unable to hide the truth. Okay, and so weil sie was versteckt. So that's a five pound not poking out from Iris. Knapsack, is it? Oh dear, I can't be sure. Most money that we encounter is in coin form. I know, I'm not even sure if we've seen any banknotes here in Britain at all, have we? But anyway, father would never have paid money for Iris silence. He's, he certainly seems like the silent type himself, though judging by his present state, there must be some other reason for Iris's silence, I suppose. Perhaps what Iris is trying so hard not to give away with her eyes is something entirely different. Um, okay. Ich persönlich... Ich persönlich glaube ja, dass das die Kiste ist. Weil was anderes würde hier nicht wirklich Sinn ergeben. Und ich kann auch nur nach links und rechts. Ja. Ich glaube, das ist die Kiste hier. Yes, the reason for your muteness is concealed inside that metal chest. An excellent observation, for upon closer inspection, there is something different about the chest's appearance. It's kept locked at all times, yet now the catch is open. Evidently, this has something to do with your refusal to speak, Iris. But it's a simple enough matter to ins incite you to speak, I'm sure. I merely need to open this chest. Here we go. <laughs> okay, it's this way I shall be Mr. Mikotova here gelandet is. <laughs> He's dead. Never. Oh, Hurley, I told you not to open it. Ah, so you found your voice now, Iris. In other words, what just happened clearly reveals the truth here. Yes, the real reason for your silence until now is... This is somewhat different to the usual dance of deduction you performed with Mr. Sholmes, isn't it? Well, he's left me alone on the ballroom floor, so I'm going to have to dance this next part solo. 
And anyway, I need to get to the bottom of this for my own peace of mind. Now then, Iris isn't usually the silent type, so... You mean you don't actually know what the answer... You don't actually know the answer yet, despite that knowing point of the finger before? Suzato, sometimes a man needs to point his finger first and think later. Oh, well, if you say so. I think we'd better examine Iris more closely and try to rescue the situation then. Okay. The Schlüssel. Sieht doch schon mal richtig aus hier. Yes, the real reason for your silence until now is that key behind your back. When Mr. Sholmes was thrown into the air before... Just before you called out to try to stop him, you slipped something out of your mouth. That something is the key now in your hands, not up the key to the chest. You're so clever, Runo. So now it becomes clear. Thanks to Mr. Shum's graphic demonstration, we can well imagine what happened here. Professor Mikotoba also opened that metal chest only to be punched into the air. And land sprawled on the settee. Oh, by the way, that doesn't explain all the facts. What about the stylish scarf and the cup of tea and above all? Why would he be wearing Kazuma Sama's mask? Well, for those curious details, I can think of only one explanation. Clearly, an unbelievable miracle took place in this room. Isn't it right, Iris? Consider how the room was arranged before this whole painful experience took place. When Professor Mikotopa opened the chest, completely unaware of what awaited him inside, the mask was flung into the air just as he was, only to land neatly on his face when it fell back down. And the teacup's journey through the air ended when it caught onto the uncautious professor's finger. Do you mean to say that the stylish scarf is actually just a tablecloth? This is the great detective's office, after all, the place of miraculous deductions. Would you expect anything else? Would you expect anything less? Yes, you're right. It happened exactly as you said. Brilliant, you're brilliant, Runo. Thus concludes Ryonosuke Narahoro's great deduction of this punchy puzzle. <laughs> punchy puzzle. Ah, oh, man, ey. Ich lieb das so sehr. So then, why don't I make a fresh pot of tea for us all? An admirable performance, Mr. Narahoro. But in the final act of the show, there you rather missed everything of importance. B Mr. Sholmes? If you would cast your mind back to my earlier deduction. Iris, clearly you're hiding a great secret. She is. From the look on her face. Mr. Shams must be right. Whatever the great secret is, the cat isn't out of the bag yet. So I put it to you again. You were attempting to abscond with that coffee cup. Mm. It really is a shame about Mr. Shams cup. Must have been smashed when Professor Mikatoba opened the chest. Oh dear, so many things seem to have been broken here. But now that the deduct... Now that the deduction has taken a different direction, Iris doesn't seem to be trying to hide the broken cup anymore. In other words, the great secret is something else. Let's put our observational skills to work here one final time then. Ich hab schon gesehen. Ja, das hier. You were attempting to abscond with that case file. Iris, as you know very well, nothing escapes the attention of a great detective. He visited Scotland Yard's autopsy laboratory earlier today. And Dr. Gorey informed us that the autopsy report of Clint von Zeeks had gone missing. 
Splint von Zeke's. Mm, yes, I do seem to recall. That some years ago I asked to see the report in question. You were with me, weren't you, Iris? You mean, it was you, Iris? So those papers you have there are... I am sorry. But when Iris die geklaut hat... Warum sollte Iris die denn mitgenommen haben? In truth, I would like to have thought I could have predicted the booby trap chest. But it caught me completely off guard. I was very nearly the light consulting detective Herlock Holmes. Habe ich gerade Booby? Ich glaube, ich habe gerade Booby vorgelesen. I'm, I'm sorry, Hurley. So you mean this autopsy report really is... Hat jetzt natürlich nichts mit Boobas zu tun. Das habe ich gerade falsch... Um Yes, I took it from the lab, even though I knew it was very important. Was there something in it that troubled you, Iris? Not exactly something that troubled me. Something I'd been looking for. When I saw this report, when I saw the writing in it... I knew it was Daddy's. The, the writing? Your father's writing? What do you really mean? Iris? It must be something that's hard for her to talk about. Forgive me for interrupting, my dear fellows. Mr. Sholmes, what is it? I feel as though the poor unconscious gentleman on the city has been somewhat forgotten. Oh, father! Perhaps we should find our guest somewhere more peaceful to rest. Mr. Narahoro, the, yes. Would you be so kind as to lend him your bed? We must do our very best to make him comfortable, I feel. Uh, yes, of course, I will help you carry him up. So will I. No, no, I can manage alone, thank you. You have tea to enjoy. We wouldn't want Iris's brew to stew. There's no better way to make the professor comfortable than dragging him upstairs like a trunk. I wonder, perhaps it was deliberate. Maybe Mr. Shams is making himself scarce to give Iris a chance to talk more freely. We must use this opportunity to talk with Iris. And find out what's going on. Would you like to tell us about it, Iris? About your father? I'm sure I told you before, didn't I, that Daddy used to be Hurley's partner. Yes, and that notes about all the cases they solved together are kept inside that metal chest. That's right, Hurley told me, you see. He said that Daddy's somewhere far away now, so we can't meet. That's one way of describing it. Then, when I secretly unlocked the chest and read through the papers inside, I started to build up a picture in my head of what Daddy must be like. Well, that's only natural. You're just like any other girl of your age. I read that Daddy was a professor of medical science, so I studied and took my degree too. Well, that's only natural, I suppose. In that respect, you're not quite like any other girl of your age, though. But there was one thing that I could never find out. Daddy's name. His name wasn't anywhere on any of the notes that he'd made about his work with Hurley. But then one day... That's what happened, is it? When you saw this autopsy report, you finally managed to work it out, is that right? Yes. But was the handwriting in the report that caught her eye? When I saw the writing on that report, I could hardly believe it. We know that handwriting. I thought to myself, because it was the same as the writing you'd seen on your father's case notes. Exactly. 
I was desperate to compare the two properly. I needed to see them side by side. I asked the doctor in the laboratory, but I was told I couldn't take the report away. And even worse, I was told that it was the first and last time we would be allowed even to look at it there. So you decided to steal it. When I compared the autopsy report with the case notes I had here, there was no doubt. The handwriting was exactly the same. It was Daddy's. And the signature of the coroner at the bottom of the autopsy report... Red Dr. John H. Wilson. So that's how I finally found out. I learned Daddy's name at last. I see. Ever since then I've called myself Iris Wilson. And that's also when I had the brilliant idea of writing stories all about Daddy's exciting times with Hurley. I decided there and then that I would write the adventure or adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Oh, Iris, I had no idea the stories had quite such a deep personal significance for you. I can see why the autopsy report was so important to her now. And why she was prepared to break the law to get her hands on it. I must apologize, Iris. This is really all my fault. Early? I made a promise, you see, that until the time was right, I would keep the details about your father a secret. I know, I've been very naughty. I will take the autopsy report back to Dr. Gori and apologize, I promise. Yes, we will go together, I think. Then uh, let me look after it for you until we get there. Okay, thank you. So, angucken. Okay, Cor Corona John H. Wilson. Victim Clint von Sieg, 33, British. Time of death, 31st May between 9 p.m. and midnight. Observations. Death from a single step wound to the heart. Other superficial external wounds indicative of a duel. Okay. Additional notes. Recent scarlet ink stains visible on the little and ring finger of the right hand, but no document and corresponding ink was found. Autopsy findings. Vital evidence recovered from the victim's stomach during autopsy. Ready to inspect the Gregson for petitioning so... Dodgely for the autopsy procedure. Victim stomach. Okay, no, inter no internal trauma noted anywhere in the body. Okay, also ein Duell. Und er hatte irgendwas vorher noch geschrieben. Okay. I must go and water my herbs, I think. I will see you all later. Poor Iris, she must be feeling awful. I know Mr. Sholmes is here for her, but still. But oh, what's the meaning of this, Mr. Sholmes? Mr. Sholmes? Oh dear me. So, you've noticed, I see. But that, that would mean... What on earth's the matter, Miss Suzato? You've turned as white as a sheet. It's this autopsy report, Mr. Naruhoro. The one from ten years ago. The writing. It's in Dr. Wilson's at all. What do you mean? How could you possibly know that? Because I know this writing very well. This writing... It's my father's. What? Professor Mikotobas? Indeed, it's true. And now you know, my dear fellows. I don't know anything. What on earth does all of this mean, Mr. Sholmes? Eh? Because the idea that's slowly forming in my mind... It's just too extraordinary to believe. Yeah, ich hab grad was in meinem Kopf. 
Aber ich will das jetzt gerade nicht aussprechen, weil wenn ich falsch liege, ich behalte das mal jetzt noch für mich. Please, you have to explain. So, this autopsy report was actually penned by Professor Mikotoba then. But that makes no sense. It's not possible, surely. Not possible. My dear fellow, pray take a deep breath and think again. Yes, you're right in some ways. It actually makes a great deal of sense. Ten years ago is when father returned to Japan after his extended study tour in Britain. And prior to his return, where was Dr. Mikotoba engaged? Of course. He was an assistant in Dr. Wilson's laboratory learning about forensic science. And as an assistant, he would have aided with the dissection work making detailed notes, which would be assembled into the full autopsy report. Once the work was complete, the head coroner would check the contents and put his signature on the document. In other words, the only writing of Dr. Wilson's in the report would be his signature at the end. I see. So Iris got the wrong end of the stick, you mean? She saw that and assumed the whole report had been written by Dr. John H. Wilson. Which is very understandable, of course. What a complicated situation. Thinking about it, most of what we know about you, Mr. Sholmes, comes from the published stories of your exploits. Yes, the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, written by Iris. And we really have no way of knowing what's fact and what's fiction. Most troubling for you, my dear fellow, I'm sure. So what about this supposed partner of yours? Did he really exist or not? Ah, you've come straight to the point, I see. And please come straight to the answer. I believe Iris explained it in one of her installments. He was a trusted comrade and the only person I could truly have called a friend. And did this partner of yours truly make a record of all your cases? Are his notes really stored inside that metal chest? Absolutely, my dear madam. Absolutely. So, where is your partner now? He rarely meets. You see, he lives on the other side of the world. But if this autopsy report and the records of all your old cases were penned by the same hand, and if the autopsy report was written, so not signed by your famous partner, there would be only one logical conclusion. Pray, impress me. Your partner would have to be Yuchin Mikotoba. In other words, Miss Suzato's father. On my word, Mr. Naruhoro. Yes? You are coming along wonderfully. You have hit upon the method at last. You finally grasped the art of deduction. You mean to say? Allow me to introduce you... To my great friend and partner, Mikotoba. <laughs> Professor Mikotoba? Okay, also doch. Does, does this mean that you're the real Dr. Wilson? Oh, no, 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 my dear. I'm so my old self, Eugene Mikotoba, your father. Oh, oh, of course. This is obviously too much for Suzato-san to take in. I must say, though, how my old friend has attained worldwide celebrity as a great mystery solver is the greatest mystery of all. I still remember the first time we met. Ah, oh, pray, remind me, when was it again, Mikotoba? Sixteen years ago, Sholmes. Ah, yes, quite. Sixteen years ago. I just arrived from Japan with Sashiro and Genjin. I was in search of lodgings close to the hospital, some comfortable rooms at a reasonable price. But rents are devilishly high in that particular area. That's right, so I decided I needed someone to share lodgings and the expense, and was fortunate enough to be introduced to Sholmes, who found himself in a similar situation. 
I was a callow fellow back then, a mere shadow of the great detective you see before you now. I was working at the hospital's chemical laboratory at the time, at the time, indulging my curiosities for a little gain. And the situation of our cohabitation led to us pursuing cases together, you see. Hard to believe it was a mere six years, we had a great many adventures. But in the last year of Mikotoba's stay in Britain, that most infamous of cases presented itself. The case with which you've become rather familiar yourselves, the, professor's ki the professor killings. After the trial, Sashiro and I were summoned back home. Hardly surprising given the circumstances. So there you have it. And as you know, all the details recorded by my trusty chronicler remain in the metal chest. This is just amazing. Professor Mikotoba really is Mr. Shom's famous partner. Father, goodness, my dear, what a cutting look. As your daughter, I'm very proud to learn that you were the great detective's great partner. But nevertheless, there's another mystery that I really must ask you to explain now. And that is... You know very well what it is. The unresolved matter of Iris' father... Yeah, that's wundert mich nämlich auch. Weil... Also, wer ist jetzt Iris' Vater? Of course, I had almost forgotten about that one. I should have seen this coming, I suppose. Iris told us that all the notes about the great detective's adventures that are in that metal chest were written by her father. Isn't that correct, Mr. Sholmes? That is indeed what I told young Iris. But if you're Mr. Sholmes' partner father and you wrote all those case notes, then Iris's father must be you. Okay, genau. Das ist der Gedanke, den ich die ganze Zeit mich nicht getraut habe zu sagen, wo ich jetzt weiß, so kurz am Überlegen war zu sagen, okay, also sind Susatte und Iris jetzt Schwestern und ich war, ich war mir jetzt nicht sicher, ob ich das jetzt nicht komplett in meinem Kopf verdreht habe und das dann nicht stimmt oder also die Vermutung zu weit hergeholt wäre, aber so habe ich das jetzt auch zusammengesetzt. Aber das würde ja bedeuten, dass Mikotoba die Mutter von Sus Susato betrogen hat. Upon my word, Miss Susato. You are coming along wonderfully as well. You too have hit upon the method at last. You finally grasped the art of deduction. What you have always told me, father, is that my mother died when I was born 16 years ago. And you left me in grandmother's care whilst you embarked on your study tour of Britain. And have always accepted that. But all this about Iris... Oh, there it is, Suzato san's ice cold stare. No, no, hold on a minute. It was very complicated. I mean, it's it's really not what you think. And then perhaps you would like to explain exactly what it is. There it is. Now the ice go from ice cold to red hot just before she. No, really, you you've got the wrong end of the stick. Show me, say something, man. That's quite enough, my fiery fellows. Mr. Sholmes, when did he get all dressed up? Whilst I don't like to interrupt this exciting exploration of the past, Mikatoba and I have an urgent matter that requires a short ex excursion. It's very late, Mr. Sholmes. Where must you go? Why, my dear madam, is that not obvious? My partner and I must pursue our natural enemies. So get your coat, Mikatoba. The game is afoot. But Sholmes, I really must give Susa to a full explanation, I think. Later, my dear fellow, later. Our carrier shivates downstairs already. You haven't changed. You haven't changed, have you? I mean, really, I visit our home after ten long years, and when I open that chest in a fit of nostalgia, I quite inexplicably pass out. 
And as if that wasn't enough, when I eventually regained consciousness, I'm plunged straight into all of this. Father, please. Go with Mr. Sholmes now. I have no doubt that whatever happened, you were acting in everyone's best interests. I trust you. Completely. Who's that who? I'm sending the great detective and his great partner off on renewed adventures together. Yes, more than I could have hoped for in my wildest dreams. Very well then, we will speak again later. So, I believe your own work is done for the day. I wish you the best of luck for tomorrow. Yes, Naruhoro, good luck in battle and in reaching a decision. A decision? About whether to go back to Japan, I suppose. しかし、The end? Okay. Okay. Wir, wir dürfen gar nicht mehr weiter untersuchen gerade. Okay, the legendary pair is das Achievement, das ich bekommen habe. Ähm, okay, also das heißt, wir werden mit dem Fall im letzten Fall. <lacht> äh, mit dem Fall in der letzten Episode, sagen wir es so rum, ist einfacher. Ähm, werden wir weitermachen und das Ganze abschließen. Das heißt, es gibt noch extrem viel ähm, aufzuarbeiten und herauszufinden, wenn die dafür die komplette letzte Episode benutzen. Okay, äh, bin ich gespannt. Ich glaube, die letzte Episode heißt auch The Resolve of Ryonosuke Narohoro. Und ich bin jetzt wirklich gespannt, wie das alles zusammenpasst. Ich kann mir jetzt nicht ganz vorstellen, dass Miko Toba tatsächlich der Vater von Iris ist. Aber wenn man das jetzt erstmal so alles dahin geklatscht sieht und diese ganzen äh, Hinweise sieht, dann komme ich halt wirklich auch zu der Schlussfolgerung, so wie Susato die Schlussfolgerung gesehen hat. Und ja, also ich bin da jetzt mal gespannt, was da noch mit rauskommt und jetzt natürlich auch, was, was jetzt wirklich passiert ist. Was ist wirklich vor zehn Jahren mit dem Professor passiert? War wirklich Gregson der Reaper? Oder was ist da jetzt wirklich alles passiert? Das würde ich gerne ähm, wissen und herausfinden. Und ja, ich bin gespannt auf diese ganzen Antworten. Im nächsten Part beginnen wir mit der letzten Episode von The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Ich hoffe, ihr hattet Spaß. Und wenn ihr mögt, sehen wir uns sehr, sehr gerne im nächsten Part wieder, wenn wir mit dem letzten Fall beginnen. Bis dahin. Ciao.